by your request, I'm going to recreate the Infinity Scroll from last week in React. And it looks something like this. You scroll down, and then it says loading, and then it loads more. So this is a very simple design that I also used for the last week's video. So I'm going to recreate this one in React. And just as before, I'm going to provide you with some starter files. So make sure to download them. You have them in the link below this video. And also, as usual, if you like my videos and want to support my channel, make sure to subscribe. Because I continuously create videos in this channel on front-end development and a lot of React stuff. All right, so let's get to it. When you download all the files and you start up the application, it's an application that is bootstrapped with the Create React app. It's just going to show us this loading down below here, so it won't do anything now. But if we look in the code, we have the usual index file, and the index file just loads the app component and the app component. This is where all the stuff is going to happen. I also provided you with a user component. That's, that's the component that's going to show the email addresses and some user styles. So you don't have to do this because I want to focus on the functionality for the infinity scroll itself. And then I have some styles also for the app. Uh, and that, this is the exact same styles as from the last week when I created it in vanilla JavaScript. I created a file that I call api.js, and this is the endpoint where I get those random users. So we can call this function, and this will fetch the users for us. We can send in a page number to load more from another page. So that's what we're going to do. All right. So let's be sure to be in the app.js file when you open up your starter files. And we can take a quick look here before we start. I've imported use state because I'm setting up three states here. One that's going to hold the page, and one that's going to hold the users itself. And then we have a loading with a setter that we can turn on and off, so we know when we load stuff. Then in the JSX, we have the regular class name app here from Create React App. And then inside of there, I have my content. This is a style component. I'm styling everything with style components in this one. And then if we have some users, I map through them here, and I show a user component for each user. But for now, we're just showing the loading because we don't have any users yet. So that's why we're not showing anything else. So we're going to fix that first. First, we're going to create a use effect that will grab the users. And then after that, we'll apply the infinity scroll. So the first thing we have to do, and also this is the API. That's the function that I showed you that I import here so we can use it in our component. We are going to have a use effect. So we import it up here, and then below here, somewhere, I call that use effect with an inline arrow function, just as usual. We have a dependency array, and for now we can leave it empty. So inside this use effect, we want to grab some data. As this is empty now, it will just run on mount. But later, we're going to change that, so we will make this dependent of the page. So this use effect will rerun each time we change the page number. And this is one approach, and I choose this one because I think it's really neat. You can't really have um, a sync function like this in a use effect. It will complain then for us here. But we can create another function inside of the use effect that's a sync, because it has to be a sync as we're fetching from an API. So we have to await that one. So const load users equals async or async. I really don't know what's the pronunciation there, but yeah, maybe it's async. Okay. So we have an async or an async uh, arrow function. And we're going to call that one from the use effect, load users, like that. So this is the way that you can have an async function in your use effect. You can't have it directly up here, but you can create an inline function in the use effect itself. All right? We're going to set the loading to true because we are fetching data now, so that's why. I'm also setting it to true as default because we are instantly going to fetch some users, so that's why. Then I create a new const, new users, 
and I await, and we're now going to call this function here, get users, that will grab the users from the API. Get users, and we're going to give it the page. For now, this one is one, so it's going to get the page number one on initial load. All right, so we await the users, and when we've got the users, we can set the user state. We have the previous state and an inline arrow function. This is going to be an array, and when we set the state in hooks, we have to provide the previous state because otherwise it will wipe the old one out. It won't merge it with the old one, as it does in a class component in React. So we spread the previous state because we want to keep the old state when we infinity scroll. Otherwise, it will overwrite them and just load the new page. We don't want that. We want to apply it to our array. So we spread the previous state, and then we apply the new users. So we spread the new users here, and this will create a new array with the old items and the new items in that array. So we merge the two together, and we can do that with a spread operator with ES6 syntax. All right, when we set our new users, when we fetch them and set them in our, in our state, we can set loading to false, like that. And this is all we need. This is going to grab some users for us. And you can see here that the use effect complains because it wants the missing dependency of page because we're using it here. So we can add that one here and then it won't complain. Do some auto formatting. Ah, it puts some parentheses there. Okay, I don't really like that when I just have a one variable here, but okay. Save it and see what we've got. Yeah, it grabs some users. You can see that it shows the loading just before it grabs the users. So that's great. But nothing more happens. We just have these users. So we have to set up the infinity scroll now. And I'm going to scroll this content div itself. So that's why I can use the on scroll in React that's built in in React. If we, for example, wanted to set the infinity scroll on the windows itself, we had to do it a little bit different because then we have to set up an event listener on the window. And we can't use this built-in that's called on scroll that I'm going to set for this content div. But that's a completely different story because then we have to, you know, use the usual stuff, add event listener and scroll and stuff like that but we don't have to do that now when we set it in this content div. We can use the built-in on scroll that's in React. So on scroll is going to equal, and we are going to call a function that we call handle scroll, like that. We haven't created this one yet, but we can do that now, and we can create it just above the use effect. So const handle scroll. And this handle scroll, I create an arrow function now. It's going to take in the event, and we have an arrow function. Then I'm going to destructure out some stuff from our current target. We have something that's called scroll top, client height, and scroll height. And we destructure out that one from event dot current target. So these are all built in in JavaScript. We get these properties back from the event and the current element that has this event attached to it. And we can console log these ones out. Console.log scroll top colon and scroll top. We can copy this one and paste it in. Two more times, and we have the client height. I just want to show you what these values are. And we can log out the client height, and then we have the scroll height. Yeah, I could mark them and put them <laughs> and edit them at the same time. Scroll height, all right. 
auto format it and save it and go back to our browser. And when we scroll, you can see that we get these values here. So we know that our on scroll event is working and we can see what these values are. Client height, it's the actual height of this div here. It won't change because I set it to 800 pixels. By default, it's always going to be 800 pixels. Scroll height, it's the actual content in the div. So now we have a scroll height of 1,750 pixels. But if we scroll down here and load more, then this is going to increase because it's the actual height of all the content inside of the div. And scroll top, it's the actual pixels that we scrolled from the top on the div where we put the scroll event. So we have zero and then we scroll and you can see that it increases. Now we scrolled roughly 67 pixels from the top. So we can use these values now to calculate when we scroll to the bottom of this div and then we're going to trigger a load event that will load more users. So back to the code, we can remove these console logs. Then we have an if statement. And if the scroll height minus scroll top, if this value equals the client height, we know that we scroll to the bottom. And if you feel uncertain about this, you can keep the console logs and you can try it out yourself and try to figure it out in your head what's going on. Um, I've actually did that a lot of times myself because I think these values can be a little bit confusing sometimes actually. But if the scroll height minus the scroll top equals the client height, we know that we have scrolled to the bottom. Trust me on this one. We now know, okay, that was hard to say. We now know when we have scrolled to the bottom, and then we can trigger something that will load more users for us. As I've set this use effect to change whenever the page changes, we can actually just set a new page, and this will trigger the use effect. And I can see that I actually misspelled this one. It should have a capital P. That will make it more clean. So set page. We have the previous state and an inline error function, and we just add it by one. So previous plus one. And save it. Go back to our browser. We try to scroll and see what happens. Yeah, it worked. You can see that it loads more users. So that's really all there is to it. It's nothing fancy. It's nothing special. It's just a simple little if statement then that will check this for us, and then we can trigger a new load. That is all you need to create an infinity scroll. And of course, as I also mentioned in the other video, this is just a very simple use case you may take into consideration when, for example, the user resize the window and stuff like that, because then it will give the elements another flow. In this case, I've just have two fixed uh, columns here, but if we had a responsive design where the columns change depending on the screen size, we have to do something more to make sure that it grabs new items when it fills up this space. And you can, for example, use something that's called the resize observer, I think, in JavaScript, to do something like that. That will keep track on when you resize the window. But in its very simple form, this is an infinity scroll created in React. Hope you enjoyed this one. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and see you in another one.